What is there to see here? It's just a bunch of rocks and sand. But I think even with that initial reaction of, you know, it's just rocks and sand, Death Valley slowly, I think, creeps into everyone's heart. The extreme heat and aridity of Death Valley definitely give it a certain character. The feeling you get out here, maybe at first, is a bit unsettling. You know, all this exposed rock and sand, there's not a lot of plants growing. You don't see a ton of wildlife out here. Feels like it could be sort of a dangerous place. Just the name itself, Death Valley, has a certain connotation that kind of evokes fear. But over time, as you recalibrate your senses, the exposed landscape here also can offer a sense of peace and, and stillness. I always think of Death Valley as the most extreme desert in North America. And for extremes, it's the hottest, driest, lowest spot around. The hottest temperatures recorded in the world, the driest spot in the country, less than two inches of rain. And then down at Badwater Basin, minus 282 feet, the lowest spot in North America. When you look at the topography around here, you look at the huge mountain ranges, six to 8,000 feet on one side, eight to 11,000 feet on the western side, that kind of traps the heat in. We have this low basin, low elevation, extremely dry air. So as Death Valley heats up during the summer, as a high pressure system settles over the west, that hot air rises, cools, it's kind of trapped in the valley, and it circulates there and heats up day after day until we get these extreme temperatures, usually in June, in July, or August. It's hard to describe the heat here, um, but one way I can describe it is that, um, you know, everybody has a household oven. Um, turn that oven onto the highest temperature, um, you know, let it heat up for a while, and then open the door, um, stick your face near it and you feel that rush of that just hot, dry air coming out of your oven. Uh, that's what it feels like here. But a normal day in Death Valley, the wind is blowing, it's 120, 125 degrees, sometimes 130 degrees, and you have that forceful hot air blowing on you. Instantly evaporates the sweat that's coming off your body, instantly dries your clothes. Um, you reach behind your ears and on your neck and um, you wonder how all that crystallized salt got there, and that's you sweating without even realizing it. Um, you know, it's, that's how hot Death Valley is in the summer. All of that combined makes it a, a very dangerous place. When you think about the name Death Valley, of course, the Tumbisha Shoshone don't refer to it as Death Valley. They think it, of it as Tumbisha, ground of fire. But for the rest of us, Death Valley was named in 1849, that party of gold seekers heading to the gold fields of California, looking for a shortcut. They passed through Death Valley in December, January, so it wasn't the heat of the year, but they got trapped in this basin. They didn't know where the water was. And as they were seeking their way out of the valley as they were being rescued and led out of the valley one of the members of that party as the story goes turned around and said goodbye death valley did that really happen we don't know but that's the tale we have to tell and there's nobody else with another story that competes with it well the first word of our national park's name is death so that's i think what immediately comes to mind there's the death, there's the isolation uh, factor here. People are actually surprised when they come to Death Valley to see more than just a flat salt pan that stretches out in either direction. You know, they're, 
They're amazed to see plants, they're amazed to see wildlife, they're amazed to see mountains. If you come in the spring, you'll see snow on those mountains. I think the name gives people enough of a negative impression that it allows them to be pleasantly surprised when they see there's water, when they see there's oasis, when they see there's plants and animals that do survive here. That's a very positive. So that many people are like, well, why do you call it Death Valley? There's actually life here. Uh, we recently had comments in the visitor center where people said it should be called a hiker's paradise. And of course, living here as long as I have, I do think it is a hiker's paradise. I love Death Valley National Park because of the feeling that I have while I'm here. I love the openness, I love the vastness, I love the magnitude of this park. I love that when you reach a certain point in Death Valley, you can look from one end of the park to the other and are basically limited by the curvature of the earth and how that makes you feel as a, as a person. You know, when you can take in that much of the earth and you can take in that much of the landscape, it does start to make you feel um, very small and insignificant, which in turn puts um, a different perspective on maybe the problems that you're having or the the day that you had at work or the argument that you had. It's an absolutely incredible place for placing perspective on things. A lot of people, when they think of our national parks, they want to go to Yosemite National Park or Yellowstone National Park, you know, which is great. Those parks are beautiful, but Death Valley National Park has everything that those parks have to offer. It has the incredible scenery, it has amazing wildlife, and the, one of the great things about Death Valley is it doesn't have the wall-to-wall -wall visitors that are the park's experience. I really do think that Death Valley is one of the hidden jewels of the National Park Service.